Hey, Matthias, good evening. Hey, Reed, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing on this uh, Monday evening for your time? Um, doing okay. It's uh, five o'clock here, so almost end of the day. But it's still bright out there, so uh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, not dark yet, which is great. Always a silver lining, right? At least when you can mm -hmm. enter and leave the office and the sunlight's still out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we unfortunately still have daylight savings for, I think, another year. But uh, as, as one just ran him off thought on that topic, uh, I believe there's an initiative uh, from Biden to actually push to get rid of uh, daylight savings. So, like, I actually would, it would be really appreciated if that could go away as a, as a dated practice that is not needed anymore. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Um would just be, I mean, it, it feels like people and politicians have been talking about this for decades now, right? So uh, I believe it when it happens, <laughs> but it would, yeah. would definitely would definitely be a good thing uh, as long exactly. as it's internationally coordinated, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, arguably, we have two states that don't do daylight savings, uh, Arizona and Hawaii. So even within the U.S., there are some states that don't. It's, so it's kind of interesting. Sometimes they're two hours uh Apart, sometimes yeah. they're one hour apart, depending on the time of year. They, they might just be across the border from you from uh, another state. Um, I lived oh, yeah. in Indiana at yeah. some point, and, and they didn't do daylight saving at the time, but it may have changed now. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it's three. I know there's there's it's a small handful that, that, that do yeah. it, but uh, th this would be a federal initiative just to get rid of it at the U.S. level, which I do think it would be great. Um, but yeah. Uh, Much I'm, needed. I'm, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm very glad to have you back on as well. I think this is our, it's our second stream. We also, I know, did the, the, the series as well, um, training the, on, on all of the, the Power BI tools and deploying it both to GitHub and Azure DevOps, which was uh, fantastic. And I, I know that's been very well received since then. But when we were chatting and you basically built um, kind of uh, as you went along at uh, Power BI Next Steps, you, you ended up with a, um, a new kind of talk on a deep dive of incremental refresh, which I'm definitely curious about today because I think like most people like it, I mean you just turn it on right like you you have your historical you have your current and you have live you know and kind of a mixture of uh, but it's like there's there's not much else to that right uh, but I, I know you and Mike are like oh no no there's like there's so much information and like so, so much configuration and like and other stuff happening and like so I'm, I'm excited for this I I presented the same time as you two did uh, during the conference so I added I have um, yet to see the content yet, so I will be able to be a participating audience member today and get a good chance to, to really um, just see what, what everything is going on about this. But I know you two were very excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, once you start getting into that topic, it, it, it's infinite, right? Uh, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's an incredibly powerful feature, but there are just so many hurdles and, and complications. And uh, yeah, uh, Mike and I had a had a good time, uh, although uh, <laughs> occasionally quite stressful as well, uh, get, getting all set up for that talk. Um, we're planning, we're definitely planning to do um, further uh, in-person versions of it in the future. Um, but um, what came out of it and what I want to talk about today is uh, uh, on the tooling side, uh, there's definitely limited support right now in, in, in the Power BI space um, when when it comes to yeah. all aspects of managing incremental refresh data sets. So uh, that's... You say limited. Um, Is there any support outside of like... You know, I, I guess the, the only implementation that I've ever uh, to configured with it is just from Power BI Desktop, but are there, are there other tools outside of maybe Visual Studio that let you configure it? Because I know AAS has had it for, for a, a while as an option, but... Well, t so Tabular Editor actually supports some aspect of incremental refresh. I'm going to show okay. that today. Nice. Um, okay. ALM Toolkit can also be quite useful, particularly when it comes to um, selective deployments. Um, so uh, yeah, there, there are some tools that basically help with some aspects, um, but um, what what I was looking for, you know, like a real end-to-end -end, uh, so, um, data solution, that's definitely not there. And so I I added a bunch of features to PBI tools uh, to help in, specifically in that space. I'm very excited to see that then. So this is going to be a fun deep dive for sure. Uh, and I think you're continuing to add notches uh, into the integrations of this. Uh, I've been working with uh, Didier a little bit and 
uh, on some other like bookmarking documentation mm -hmm. stuff. And I know his his tool plugs in and utilizes some of the extraction things that this tool has. So you're, it's even starting to play nice with other external tools as well, which is pretty cool to see the integrations that this is starting to get. Um, yeah, I would, I would yeah. say whenever you are um, ready, we can uh, flop over. I can see the, the screen that uh, has the intro and then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, I put a slide here just with some information about myself. Um, uh, in case people don't know me, uh, based in London, I'm from Germany originally, which you probably hear. Um, I'm, I'm running um, a, a Power BI and, and a data management team uh, for YouGov, and um, uh, my so my, my big topic of interest is Power BI data ops. So basically, uh, how do you manage a Power BI tenant in an enterprise? Um, how do you um, uh, use uh, automation as much as possible? Um, how do you uh, 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 get to tooling that actually helps you streamline things? And out of that, PBI tools, which we already mentioned earlier, um, uh, came uh, which is uh, an open source tool I've been working on for quite a few years now. Um, although it's only been released um, uh, to the public uh, almost exactly a year ago. So PPI Tools just had its first anniversary in terms of being uh, publicly available. Um, and that's super exciting. I think it's had over 6,000 downloads uh, uh, already. Um, and uh, it's definitely been really uh, really nice to to get a lot of feedback and interest in it so um let me just move on here um just wanted to go through incremental refresh basics a little bit um talk about uh and then it's mostly demos basically right so uh we're going to show uh the the setup of the demo i've prepared and then we'll look where as i mentioned tablet editor helps um where PBI Tools helps. Um, I also have an end-to-end -end, uh, demo uh, how to uh, manage incremental refresh data sets via GitHub Actions. Um, and um, a brand new release of PBI Tools uh, came out just last night. So this is uh, very fresh uh, and um, uh, basically right for this session. <laughs> um, and it's it's got a bunch of uh, new features in it, uh, specifically helping with incremental refresh. So I'll talk about that too. I'm, I'm more Excellent. than happy to take questions uh, if and when. Uh, so it uh, doesn't have to be a lecture. I'm, I'm very happy to for this to be interactive. Um, happy for me to dive straight in? Perfect, yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. All right, so incremental refresh, is basically here to support data sets where you've got massive amounts of data um, uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of data volumes uh, where you can't necessarily afford uh, to do a full refresh, uh, loading all your data um, uh, when, when you've got your refresh um, uh, scheduled. And um, uh, Power BI and, and the underlying analysis services has always had a concept of uh, partitions where you uh, basically have any number of partitions um, uh, 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 underneath any given table uh, and then pretty much the combination of the, those partitions make up your data and that's what incremental refresh um, takes advantage of it, it basically um, uh, keeps archived or historic data in some partitions and then uh, it only refreshes um, a, a set of other partitions uh, making uh, uh, ensuring that there's a limited amount of bits and bytes you need to transfer across um, and um, looking at this chart here which, which I got from uh, Microsoft Docs uh, it basically uses color coding um, to distinguish three different let's say uh, uh, ranges of partitions. Um, gray is archived, um, yellow incrementally refreshed, and then an advanced feature that's only available in premium is um, 
uh, real-time data where uh, data isn't even loaded into Power BI, but you're actually using a direct query to actually fetch data, for instance, for the last 24 hours or so, uh, directly from the external data source. Um, we're not going to look into real-time uh, and direct query stuff here, so, so we're just using pro features, if you will, um, which means uh, for the rest of this demo, we'll just have to distinguish between what's our gray archive data and what's our yellow um, incrementally refresh data. Um, and if you go into Power BI Desktop and you enable um, incremental refresh, which is actually done at the table level, um, you get this dialog, which I've got on the, on the right there. So you select a table and then uh, you specify um, uh, the uh, two different time ranges uh, I talked about. So one of them is this, and the other one is that one. Uh, so this is um, your archive data, and then this is your incrementally refreshed data. And the way you specify that is not by putting explicit start and end dates in there, but you actually put um, multiples of um, a, a, a date granularity uh, or of a date unit in there. So for instance, five years or five months, right? Or three days. And um, it then means that uh, Power BI will manage uh, the creation and deletion and merging of partitions for you. And uh, it will ensure that um, for in this particular case, the, the most recent three days are always incrementally refreshed whenever, um, whenever you um, do a full refresh of your data set. And it will ensure that um, you retain five years of archive data uh, prior to that. Um, down here, we've got the uh, uh, at premium option I mentioned before. And then at the bottom here, you, you have a nice little graph which basically shows you the impact of your settings. Um, so that's just a quick recap in terms of what the UI looks like. But what I want to do today is um, to actually go under the hoods and uh, show everyone uh, what happens when you make those settings and um, uh, what um, uh, at, 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 at what impact uh, and, and uh, you've got for, for deployment, for instance. Um, so uh, just a quick recap here. I can no longer see you, Reid. Uh, just making sure uh, we're still, uh, you're still there. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just, I, okay. I had to move oh, our right. image Sorry. because there, was it was just, covering up some of your I was, stuff. I was yeah. just a little <laughs> worried here that no worries. Um, somehow you're still, you're I was still good. just talking to myself. And um, so, um, so with incremental refresh enabled, Power BI service manages partitions for you fully automatically. Uh, you don't have to do that. And um, it basically uses a, a strict naming scheme, which is uh, date-based. Um, so here's a good example. Um, and this is actually what uh, those partitions look like. Uh, uh, so if we had a partition that contained a full year, it uh, is literally named uh, after that year. The next granularity that's supported is quarter. Um, and then uh, after quarter, we have month. Uh, the naming is always like that. So in this case, Q204 would be April. And then when we get to uh, daily um, data, we're still specifying the quarter here, and then we've got the month and the day. Uh, that's what they're called. And you can see that um, uh, a date dimension and a date parameter is absolutely crucial here. So everything is around dates. And uh, the other thing um, supporting the whole setup um, are two standard parameters, which um, you need to ensure exist in your data set. They're called, they have to be called range start and range end. And really importantly, that's also something where I almost shot myself in the foot a few times. Um, they have to be of type date time, which is a bit counterintuitive because you would only ever specify actual dates in there. There's a, the time portion never, uh, is never set and never used. However, for some weird reason, um, Power BI requires that this is a Power Query date time parameter and it can't handle a date parameter. 
So yep. really important. Uh, if you if you don't think about that, um, you'll you'll wonder why you go to the incremental refresh dialog and it uh, it it won't um, uh, allow you to go any further. And so yeah, um, there are three points um, you need to take care of. Um, you have to ensure that the Power Query um, behind your table actually uses those two range parameters for filtering. Um, Power BI isn't going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. um, you need to ensure that you get um, query folding um, uh, with those parameters because that's the whole point. Uh, um, query folding, uh, just for um, everyone's benefit, uh, basically means that, uh, for instance, a filter specified in Power Query is propagated all the way back to your original data source, uh, ensuring that um, only you know um, the, the the filtered slice of data you, you want to see is actually um, fetched, and um, uh, so that's your responsibility. Uh, you can theoretically, uh, you know, apply incremental refresh without getting any of the benefits um, if you don't get query folding here. Um, and then I would also suggest that for development purposes you set a, a default range start and range end, uh, that's sensible. So basically just a few days or so, so that whenever you refresh the data set in Power BI Desktop, um, you uh, don't have to sit there and, and wait for too long. And um, so uh, some tooling challenges we've got today, and, and after that, I'll basically uh, move into the demo. Um, the tooling challenges are, for instance, um, deploying um, new versions of data set without um, accidentally <laughs> overriding those partitions that um, potentially contain millions and millions of records, right? You definitely want to ensure that that doesn't happen, um, um, certainly not as an accident either. Um, uh, handling your initial deployment, right? So let's say you define your incremental refresh data set um, how, you know, uh, what do you do in terms of uh, getting this into Power BI for the first time and then making sure it has all the data you need? Um, testing. Um, because, um, as I said before, uh, incremental refresh basically depends on um, a date parameter that's injected by Power BI. Um, if you wanted to test that, you can't really afford to sit there uh, and wait 24 hours uh, to see a change and then to figure out what's happening, right? So you gotta you gotta have some better tooling um, uh, for that, and this is precisely what PBR tools uh, will give you. And then also visibility, right? So um, as I said, Power BI manages those partitions for you, but you know um, you don't want to take this as a black box. You want to see what's going on, and in an ideal world, you also want to see what's happening during the refresh process. And, and so that's basically what, what I thought was uh, tricky and where we had some gaps in our tooling and where I'm gonna show um, some slightly better options. So if I switch over to Power BI, um, here we go. I um, created just a, 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 a sample data set, uh, which we're looking at here, let me just do a refresh. And um, uh, this is um, New York taxi data, which uh, lots of people have probably seen before. Uh, it's, a, it's a very common demo data set because it comes with 1.5 billion records uh, from oh, wow. 10 years. Um, and um, uh, it's available as an open source data set. So very convenient actually. And um, so if we're looking here, um, we can see that this data set currently has 16 and a half million records in it. So I did not load all the 1.5 billion. I could have, but um, uh, there's no need. And uh, we can see this is coming from 36 different dates uh, between the 1st of October and the 5th of November. And um, in fact, um, we even have a date in the future here. I'll explain um, how I got to that uh, in a bit. And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much um, the, the, the data set as we've got it in here, that's the one we're going to deal with. And this very simple report just helps us to sort of see um, what's there. And um, if we go um, in here, so this is a uh, tablet editor. I've opened the exact same data set um, from my Power BI workspace. 
And we can see there are two tables in here. One is called taxi trips that basically uh, has the, all the taxi data. And then I've got another metrics table, which only has um, a number of metrics in it uh, or measures. And uh, I've already expanded this piece. So uh, what I what I explained earlier is is basically what we can see in practice here. So those are uh, six partitions. Um, they're all maintained by Power BI, and we can see that because they say policy range. Uh, any partition mm. you create explicitly uh, will say M, for instance, or uh, or uh, something else. But uh, when it says policy range, it means uh, that's. And it comes from a refresh policy and Power BI basically generated that for you. And um, we can just looking at the partition and we know exactly what's in there, right? Um, so here, this is um, a Q410, uh, which is basically October, right? And then here we've got 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th of November. So we can see that um, just by looking at partition names, this data set contains data from the 1st of October to the 5th of November, which is precisely what we just saw in that report. Um, and um, Power BI, a, a tabular editor, um, allows us to see a few more things. So for instance, uh, the setup. So I've got my table selected. Again, the table is where the um, refresh is configured. And if I go over here, um, there is a dedicated section called refresh policy. And that one basically has the settings for my, uh, for my incremental period, mm -hmm. which is this. So I'm saying it's one day um, and I've got a minus one offset. So that means if I do a refresh today on the 17th, um, it will actually um, discard the current day and it will um, do a refresh for the 16th. Uh, that way ensuring that I only get full days, basically. So the minus one offset is quite common. So that, and, that's probably um, the uh, th that's probably related to that toggle when you use the UI that, that says whether or not yes. like to include current dates, basically zero or Correct. minus one, right? Okay. Yes, absolutely. So yes, uh, in, in Power BI, it's a Boolean. It's yes or no, basically minus one or zero. But as you can see, if you use Tablet Editor or any other tool, you, you can do anything in there. Um, and then we've got this other thing, which is uh, called the routing window. Um, so that's the archive uh, period. That's what we're saying. Um, one month of data um, should be kept in, in, my, in my archive um, partitions and uh, they will not be touched whenever I do a full refresh. Um, only my incremental uh, uh, partitions will change, and uh, and those archived partitions, if anything, they will be merged at some point, but uh, they will never fetch any fresh data. And um, the, the granularity supported here are day, month, quarter, and year. So you can't do week. Um, so uh, it, arguably, it's, it's quite a, a jump between day and month, but uh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, how it's set up. So that's that. And um, then the other thing you can see, uh, uh, selecting any individual um, partition, we also have um, a refresh policy section over here. And that basically tells us for this specific partition, what's the start date, what's the end date, and what's the granularity. Um, and the, the one thing to be aware of, end, the end date is always um, exclusive. So uh, when this one says uh, start uh, second and end third, it means it includes the second, but it does not include the third. So it's basically a partition just for the day of the 2nd of November. So if you change the granularity from day to, what are the other options? Is it, like, is it day, month, quarter, year? Correct. Yeah. So here, I've got okay. invalid, <laughs> day, month, quarter, year. Wait, wait. So, what is the? Uh, maybe you're getting get to this, but what is an invalid option? Like, can you set it as invalid? Um, I mean, theoretically, you can, but I don't think you're going to achieve anything <laughs> with that, right? I, like, um, it's it's curious that the user can can configure it as that, because yes. invalid to me it would almost be an auto return status where it's been misconfigured. But the fact that you can select it is curious. I, I'm wondering, is there ever a scenario where you would no. want to? Okay. No, no, no. This, this is okay. this is just sort of uh, all the different uh, statuses you know the engine provides. I, gotcha. I don't think there's any okay. use case for the so, user. So just curiously, I mean, then if that, if that was set to month, um, 
like given your date ranges, what would happen then? In, in what would the window be if that was changed from day to month with a an end and a start at the days that you have? Does it go to the beginning and the end well, of, of the that month ranges? So if if you change this, you would basically interfere with Power BI, right? The whole point yeah. is that because this is based on a refresh policy, you shouldn't touch it uh, because it's all managed for you, right? And mm. so um, people normally call this undefined behavior. So, mm. right? If you if you were to mess with any of those partitions, that's not expected. <laughs> and um, okay. who knows, right? Fair enough. Um, <laughs> um, I think Daniel could probably have implemented this slightly differently so that it's all read only in terms of those parameters uh, rather than you being able to change it right so yeah be really careful with that I, I would I would generally just use it as a read only uh, interface for okay. for um, for those partitions so that's what oh, we yeah, yeah. cool and um, so let me um, uh, solve the mystery of how I actually got to the 5th of November here. So when I talked about testing earlier, um, that's precisely what I did here. So PBI Tools has a feature which allows you to actually travel in time, if you will. <laughs> um, so what you're going to get out of the box um, using Power BI um, or any, any of the existing tooling it's uh, uh, incremental refresh is always going to be dependent on the current date. Um, so if you run an incremental re refresh today, it would be based on the 17th of October and that's it, right? Um, but um, for testing and arguably also for demos, um, it's, um, it's uh, you know, much more useful being able to actually impact that. And uh, that's something which Power BI, uh, which PBI tools allows you to do. So you can actually set the date that um, is going to be uh, considered the current date, you know, during your refresh, and that allows you um, to, for instance, test what what will your data look like once you get to the sixth of November, right? Because uh, that's actually um, what's happening here, right? Because I've got my minus one offset, I'm getting the fifth of November partition on the sixth of November, right? And um, so let me show you how that works. Um, I've got uh, the project um, with the source code for this particular data set open here. Um, and uh, if I go to my table, uh, we can see that this is basically the Timsel view of the refresh policy. So the J JSON view that uh, d d uh, defines the policy. So we've got one month for rolling window and one day for incremental, and we've got the minus one offset. And um, what I can do now, I can set a um, environment variable called PBI tools underscore effective date. And I'm just going to set this to the 7th of November, uh, 22, right? So that's, um, that's in, in my current session right now. And if I now um, deploy this data set and uh, also run a refresh, um, it's going to make the engine believe that today is the 7th of November instead of the 17th of October. So, and uh, this is normal PBI tools. Um, so I do PBI tools deploy. Um, I, uh, I put a dot here to refer to the current folder, which contains my manifest. And then the um, deployment uh, profile for this particular deployment is called taxi trips. Um, and uh, if I run this, what um, uh, the metadata for the data set is going to be uh, deployed, then it's going to actually give me a listing of all current partitions. Uh -huh. um, so uh, coming back to the visibility I talked about earlier, um, it's also going to ensure that uh, none of the existing um, incremental refresh partitions will be touched. Uh, that was a problem with earlier versions of PPI tools. That's no longer a problem now. Um, and um, it will then trigger a refresh. And um, that, again, is going to use this particular date parameter. And uh, uh, in addition to that, um, we will also see a, a live log of what's actually happening during the refresh. Um, so I'm just going to hit enter here um, and uh, hopefully I'm using I'm using an, uh, a synapse 
um, SQL serverless endpoint here. So uh, uh, sometimes it's super fast, sometimes it's not, uh, but there we go, uh, we're lucky. So it's pretty much kicking off straight away. Very nice. Um, so we can see um, if I just uh, take a bit, bit, bit of a snapshot here. So this is PPI tools telling us that it's starting a full um, data set refresh. It's also telling us that it's using the 7th of November as the effective date. And then down here, all those blue um, bits, uh, those are uh, live um, logs coming straight from the XMLA endpoint, uh, which basically tell us uh, very detailed what's happening in terms of the refresh. It's telling us when a particular um, partition is, is being refreshed. Uh, it's telling us uh, uh, when data is being read. Um, so here, for instance, if I just take another snapshot, we can see um, we've got the uh, uh, Q4.11.05 partition. So the one for the 5th of November is, is, is currently being uh, refreshed. Uh, we've got a read data uh, event here, and it's telling us that so far it's read um, 340,000 rows. Uh, and as you can see, the increment is uh, 10,000. So basically every 10,000 rows, I'm gonna get um, a log message here. And um, if you don't think about, uh, you know, having this automated and having this run as a pipeline, you're actually gonna get some really useful um, logs that you could investigate through if you ever need to do any troubleshooting. And then what happens next, mm, we're getting this. Okay. So this is also um, where uh, PPI Tools is going to help us uh, with visibility a lot. So at the do end you format of the... It? Do you format it into that or is that how it basically yes. is spitting it out? Okay, I was going to say if it, if it manages to spit that out automatically, but uh, okay, so you basically print it out into a summary grid. Yeah, so that's what PPI Tools does for you. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's using a nice, uh, uh, it's using, um, uh, Spectre console, which is an, uh, another open source project, and it's got really amazing tools for console output, um, including creating a table like that. And and so this is, um, again, helping us with visibility um, enormously. So, uh, so here we basically have a refresh summary, and it's uh, telling us for every single partition that was um, included in a refresh, what happened, uh, how long did it take, and, and how many rows were read, right? So if we're looking at this, uh, we've got the metrics table um, here, which is basically, uh, that that one has no table, uh, no data in it. It basically just contains measures as we've seen, but um, technically <laughs> there's still a refresh happening. Uh, it's uh, basically takes 16 milliseconds as you can see. Um, and then here we can see um, 11.05. And 1106. So those are basically the two incremental refresh partitions for those two dates um, that were part of this refresh. Um, again, I set the the seventh to be my effective date. So it it then ended up um, adding um, a new partition for the six, and it also does a, a a rerun of the of the most recent partition that was in place uh, previous uh, to that. Um, so that's why we've got both the fifth and the six here. And we can see um, there are basically uh, four different categories um, where we're uh, um, uh, capturing some metrics. Uh, the most interesting one uh, for our purposes is read data, where we can see over here what's the row count. So we basically read 420,000 rows on the fifth and 448,000 on the sixth. And um, we can also see um, reading the data took um, uh, 3.7 seconds here and um, uh, 7.3 seconds here, but then um, uh, there was a lot more going on. Uh, if you look at tabular refresh, uh, ta that event is basically uh, the end-to-end. -end. So um, we can tell that uh, it took 45 and a half seconds uh, for the fifth and um, 82 seconds for this one. Um, most of that is effectively Power BI waiting for the SQL endpoint to start fetching some stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, this is, I mean, that kind of insight uh, has always been available, but people 
so far have were forced to use SQL Profiler and and to actually run a SQL Profiler session. You know, which takes quite a lot of setup and and it's always a one-off. Uh, what PBI Tools offers you now is for those important metrics to be part uh, of every single automated deployment for free, right? So, um, so that's one thing where uh, you have much more visibility. And uh, then, so this is basically the um, refresh summary. And then the other thing we're getting is this one. Um, we're also getting a partition summary. Um, so this is uh, uh, also a relatively recent feature and um, it, it lists every single partition in the data set, um, as you can see in a nice um, tabular format as well. It shows you what type of partition it is. So is it an M partition? Is it, uh, is it calculated? Is it policy range? It also shows you, is it import mode or direct query mode? Um, when was it last modified? And then over here, this is, this is a brand new feature. Um, when those are policy range partitions, it shows you what's the start and end date for those. So again, full visibility, uh, it's no longer a black box. And we can also see that um, uh, because those partitions are actually shown in the order in which they were created. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, so we had one to five, then uh, at, um, October was added. And just now, uh, the 6th of November was added. So yeah, this is um, basically a, 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 a quick overview of um, what's uh, of some of the things that are new in terms of um, uh, Power BI, uh, a PBI tool, sorry. Um, and if I uh, go back into Power BI now, um, I remember last time we, we basically had 16.4 million records here. It says uh, first to the fifth. If I now go and refresh, um, it now says uh, first to the sixth. So I've got one extra day here. And uh, this basically um, uh, proves that uh, that uh, particular refresh run um, succeeded. And um, uh, if, if you're... Do you want me to go on or are there any questions uh, at this point? None so far. A lot of people just uh, nerding out on the, 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 the level of detail uh, that, that this has been able to produce. And I, I think it's exposing a lot um, of the, the nuances and complexity that goes into what's happening um, in the back end for sure. And it, I think even for just an education to a degree of the people who maybe don't truly really understand like what the tabular model does or how it partitions or anything else, um, especially like the the partitions that are even required to store mm -hmm. the data separately like this, because you can't just do this on a single partition. It has to be split, which is the entire yeah. um, process for, for this. So I, I, I like that um, it prints, uh, produces it out, but I think the, my big takeaway is just the, the formatting that comes with this, because I, I know when we've looked at bookmarks and a few others, like you can technically just get the raw bookmark data in JSON format, but give that to a... Um, uh, you know, standard layman who's not too familiar with JSON, it's very hard to read. So having this in a in a more printable form, uh, I think, uh, adds to the usability for a lot uh, for a wider audience. And I always get really nervous when I have to deal with black boxes, right? So <laughs> I need to yeah. I need to if I'm responsible for something, I need to see what's going on in there, right? And so uh, this gives you full visibility. You know, you see mm -hmm. those are the partitions. Uh, they do have data. So a, a state is also quite important. Um, you can theoretically have a partition that's um, a de a de a declared, but uh, has no data in it. Uh, so, and that would show here, it would then say, it would literally say no data. That's the that's the technical term there. Um, when it says ready, it means uh, it's it's got data and uh, the tablet engine does not think that it needs a recalculation or anything like that. Um, and then the other thing is, um, so this table in particular, you know, the one that gives you lots of um, insightful uh, stats around your refresh process, um, mm -hmm. that is also being exported uh, into a CSV file. Um, you can see that here. Um, in fact, uh, I've got that sitting here. And this is something you could actually archive in blob storage and you could do some, um, uh, analysis on, uh, you know, if uh, if if you wanted to know um, what is 
your uh, row count in particular tables? Uh, what's the duration? Uh, you know, are there any outliers in terms of how long your refreshes take? So there are lots of, uh, you know, there, there's a lot in this data and PPR Tools basically makes it available to you for free. Um, you just need to figure out, you know, what are you going to do with that and how do you turn it into, into a time series data set, for instance. Um, so the next thing I wanted to show was um, uh, Power BI doing some magic for us. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, if I if I go back to the tabular editor and switch to another um, instance of my data set, here we go. So I'm gonna take this one. So this is uh, basically the same data set, just a, a slightly different um, state of refresh. So. Uh, what I've done here is, um, as you can see, I started um, refreshing this data set on the 1st of October, and I went all the way down uh, to the 1st of November, right? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, uh, so the 1st of November is, is the very last uh, partition we've got. And so um, if you now think about what will happen next, um, uh, the next time we refresh, uh, we're going to add a new partition for the second of November, and um, uh, we and and because I I defined my refresh policy to be one day for the for the for the incremental refresh, only that one will then basically be my incremental refresh um, range, uh, which also means all the other partitions here, basically uh, particularly the one from the first to the thirty first of October, um, they will. Uh, they will now effectively be in my archive range. And as you can see already, uh, those 31 partitions combined basically make up a, a single monthly partition, right? And and so that's what I want to show next because this is, this is where Power BI does a lot of magic for us. So next time I run a refresh um, on this, not only is a new daily partition going to be added, but all those 31 are actually going to be merged together into just a single. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Right. So uh, what I need to do for this, I need to set my effective date to the third, because remember, I've got the I've got the first of November as my last partition, which means that was created on the second, and I wanna I wanna go out one more day, so I need to set it to the third, so that I'm getting um, the the second added, and uh, then I defined um, I defined uh, this um, environment down here as an alternative environment which means if I now say demo two, um, I'm expecting two things to happen. Again, the 2nd of November partition will be added, and then also all the other partitions are gonna be combined into one um, without any of the October data having to be read again. Um, so this is, uh, uh, th th this this is where being able to um, move that date around, you know, se uh, selecting the effective date is, is actually really handy because uh, otherwise you'd have to sort of wait until a few weeks in the future or so to be able to see that. Um, so um, hopefully that won't take too long. It normally just reads about 50 megabytes of data for each day. And um, uh, are there... Are there any questions or is there anything I could possibly react to? Nothing other than I think I'll throw up a few people in the chat that I'm sure you'll recognize. Kurt's uh, really enjoying the, the PBI tools wizardry that he's seeing today. So I'll, I'll throw a couple of uh, good awesome. remarks on here. Yeah. Uh, both Kurt and Elise Ben uh, was here earlier too. So a few people that we know from, from Next mm -hmm. Steps. I almost didn't recognize Kurt uh, on, on that uh, picture there. It's, it's slightly more beard nowadays. <laughs> yeah, well, and with, with or without glasses, too, is a, is a big yeah. difference as well, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, look, so stuff's happening. So we just read 336,000 <laughs> records for the, for the mm -hmm, first. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, it always reloads the uh, 
penultimate uh, partition for some reason. I haven't quite figured out why, why it does that, but that's what it does. And now it's reading data for the seconds. So that's the new partition. Um, and it's already done with that. Now it's doing a little bit of merging. Um, here we go. So this is October. And it's, it's claiming it's reading that data, but it's not actually because it's got it already and it would take way longer. Uh, as you can see, we're in the millions here, 14 and a half million. And look, now we're done. And most importantly, so remember, I still have this thing, right? So we did have 31 plus one. We had 32 partitions uh, prior to my most recent refresh. Now um, we have three. Right, and so uh, this this is this is the real uh, benefit you're getting for free when using the uh, the, the, the um, incremental refresh feature. Uh, now, um, all of those 31 were condensed into just this one, um, and uh, the 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 first state as it was, and the second was being added because we didn't have that data prior to that. And if we then look at the refresh stats up here. We can see, um, here we go, uh, let me, yeah, if I do it like this, so we can see here, this is, um, this is my um, October partition. We can see there are only two events. Uh, we don't have um, execute SQL here. Um, or tabular refresh um, because um, uh, it was a merge event. It, it didn't actually read those uh, 14 and a half million records there, right? Okay. Okay. And um, so there we go. So yeah, I wanted to show that as well. And um, uh, the next thing to show would be how all of that looks, what uh, looks like in, um, well, uh, so uh, first of all, let, let me just uh, prove that we actually have that data available. So uh, I've got the exact same report uh, for, for this particular data set. So if I go into a report, we can see, if I do a refresh here, we can see 1st of October to 2nd of November. So that's fully expected at this point. And um, so let's go... Um, let's go here. So this is where I've done a uh, publicly available uh, GitHub repo. So anyone can navigate there. Link is going to be in the slides as well, um, where I've taken that exact same setup and um, I've um, uh, created GitHub Actions, so basically um, an automated pipeline which will run the deployment and the uh, and, and the refresh. And um, obviously here, I don't have the ability to just <laughs> go to my sh command line and, and type in a random date, right? So what I've done here is uh, I actually, I'm setting the environment variable inside the YAML script uh, and that's happening right here. So there we go. So um, ENV is the um, environment, uh, tag, uh, the, the um, uh, keyword for environment variables, and then down here is uh, what we've seen before uh, using exact same syntax. Um, so what I can do now, um, I already uh, changed this to the seven earlier, didn't I? So um, what I can do now, if I change this to the eight, uh, uh, we can then see, um, in fact, um, I'm not sure whether you knew, but if you're in GitHub and you're looking at a particular file, just go in here and change the .com to .dev and see what happens. Uh, now I'm actually getting Visual Studio Code in my browser with that particular file and uh, with all the features VS Code has, including source control integration. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and so I can go here now, I change that to eight, I immediately get it um, as a change in my source control tab, and I can commit it. Basically, can just say bumped uh, the date, and 
The action is defined with a trigger, which means um, if I go here, I can see uh, a GitHub action was automatically launched um, because of the change I just committed. So I can go in here and I can basically see um, all the stuff that's happening, uh, including yeah. all the uh, outputs from PBI tools uh, in real time. Um, so there we go. That's Unfortunately, cool, yeah. the tables aren't formatted as nicely <laughs> here, but uh, I mean, it's it's happening in real time in a browser. So I think it's, it's pretty impressive in any case. Um, and we can see here, uh, refresh started, it's using the 8th of November as a uh, as the effective date, which means um, it's uh, doing some processing for the 6th and for the 7th. 6th is, is the most recent one that was already in place. 7th is a new partition and um, yeah, should just uh, take a minute or so. And uh, uh, just showing uh, what this looks like when it's not interactive, uh, but fully automated. So we can see data is being read here, 450,000 for the 6th of November partition. And uh, the same thing should now uh, take place. Um, uh, and actually, whilst that's running, um, I, um, uh, I can also show uh, a live view of those SQL requests. So again, I'm using Synapse here, as I mentioned before, and uh, you can see how um, the uh, dynamic date parameters, which, which are handled uh, by Power BI, are being injected here, right? So this is, this is a select statement, and then down here, I've got a, a date greater than equal, so that's the start date, and then I've got, and that's the seventh, and then I've got the date um, lower than, and that's the end date, and that's exclusive, and that's the eighth, right? So if you've got that kind of visibility into your ultimate data source, you've got full confidence uh, around what hap what's happening, and you can easily verify that you actually get query folding here. Um, cool. So. Let's see if that's that's done. Uh, it took a minute, 40 seconds. And if I go in here, I basically have a nice record of everything that's happened. So this is uh, this is a view of my partitions before the refresh. Uh, then, then we've got the refresh happening. And then I've got a view of my partitions after the refresh. And then, uh, sorry, uh, first of all, I'm getting the refresh stats, so uh, showing the various events, and then I'm getting a view of my partitions afterwards. And again, those um, summary stats are also available in that CSV file. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, if, I, uh, if I declare those as um, artifacts, which I have done here, um, GitHub uh, will basically retain them for me. Uh, and I can download this as a zip file containing um, that CSV file uh, with, with my stats. As you can see, it's just 900 bytes, so not a lot of stuff in here. So again, um, let's prove that this has worked. So if I go back to, in this case, that one, we should now have data all the way up to the 7th. So if I click Refresh, here we go, 7th of November. Uh, it's now um, uh, it's almost 17 and a half million records in here. And as you can see, um, even though this is a lot of data, it's extremely um, fast and and, uh, and responsive. Um, so there we go. That's, um, uh, yeah, so this is how, how we're doing this um, interactively on the command line. Um, how does it, what does it look like in, uh, in GitHub Actions. Um, I'm going to go back to my slides here. So just a quick recap, PBI Tools Preview 5 has been available since last night. Key things in here, uh, incremental refresh is now supported. Um, you can also do selective refresh of individual partitions. I haven't shown that, but uh, that's also there. We've got support for effective date. Um, one thing that's also new, but 
little out of scope here, you can now set cloud uh, data set credentials. So uh, if you're not using an enterprise gateway, if you're connecting for instance uh, to a Synapse SQL endpoint, um, you can actually set the username and password um, uh, as part of your deployment script. Previously, you, you had to do this manually, which was uh, always quite oh, good. That's great, yeah. So that's new. Um, there are uh, five new settings in the manifest, which are related to incremental refresh. I've put them here, but they're going to be, well, I'm not going to read them out now. Plus, <laughs> they're going to be in, in the documentation. Um, and, and if anyone um, is looking at the slides later, um, you'll get that too. I also put this here. That's a screenshot from Microsoft documentation, which uh, actually explains in some great detail what happens uh, when a refresh policy is applied uh, during a refresh. And it um, it's very important to highlight that even with a full refresh type, historic partitions um, are always ignored. Uh, it, mm -hmm. uh, so only your incremental refresh partitions um, uh, are refreshed uh, even when you go for full. So that's also something which um, may not be um, expected or intuitive. Quick question, um, just on the, uh, the, the updates for this and come on. Well, try to get it onto the screen, but it's not showing up. So it's the uh, individual just wanted to know um, for Bringing this in and getting this into uh, the, the latest build, do you need to, is there any kind of um, uh, uninstall, reinstall that's required or can you simply just update PBI tools? There we go, it took a second to pop up onto the screen. Yes, um, so uh, there are yeah. two ways how you acquire PBI tools. If you're using this in, in a CICD context, um, you will reference it in your YAML file. So if we're looking at this, um, here we go. Uh, because we're currently in preview mode, um, uh, th this is, uh, you need to basically change this particular version tag uh, to .5 uh, from whatever you had previously. It's um, If you're using the, the latest tag, you would still get the RC1 at this point. So that's that. Um, if you're using it on your own machine, um, there is no installer right now, right? PPI Tools ships as a zip file that you basically, uh, as, as basically a portable version that, that you basically just extract anywhere into your uh, file system, um, then set the path variable so you can um, easily invoke it. So yeah, just overwrite w whatever version you've got in place right now. Uh, okay. yeah. I, I've, I'm, I'm quite keen on, on shipping an installer and I've got someone who's looking into this at the moment, but um, uh, can't give any timelines yet. Does his name rhyme with Ike? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> possibly. <laughs> I figured. Um, cool. Yeah, that's pretty much what I had. So I'm just going to switch here. Um, uh, Follow me on Twitter. That's basically where most of my stuff is happening or LinkedIn if you're interested. Um, uh, you can sponsor PBI tools, right? I'm doing all of this sort of, you know, on my own time with my own money at the moment. So um, uh, sponsorship is available via GitHub and is highly appreciated. Uh, um, and um, over the last month, I've actually had um, four or five uh, sponsors who are going to get a shout out in, in the next release notes. Um, so that's hugely appreciated. Um, and then one other thing, um, uh, if you, if I may, um, if you want to join my team here in London um, or remotely, um, I've got a very exciting role open for a Power BI product owner. Um, um, and uh, that uh, basically, uh, that role will have huge agency over, you know, the d direction and and uh, 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 and, and 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 strategy around our various dashboards and and reports, and um, will be hands on um, with uh, our key stakeholders. Um, so, looking for someone who is uh 
highly energized and and super excited you know to to work uh in in that kind of role and and who um really enjoys a bridging technologists on the one hand and uh you know business uh stakeholders on the other hand uh if you're interested uh, are already uh, already a couple of people who are like hey that seems interesting so you might have a couple applicants off the stream today yeah that, yeah i would hope so um so um and yeah, just click on that link there to get to the uh, to see the complete job description as well as uh, to get uh, to our recruitment portal. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for letting me pitch that. Um, and we're right on time, I think. <laughs> I have a question, a uh, very targeted question from Didier that I will uh, bring up. I'm surprised, or I, I, I'm I'm not surprised that he he wanted to ask this. Uh, He's very impressed by the tool. Did you, you have, have you had a chance to speak with the Gap team or any other? Um, I'll just broaden it to Microsoft people at all about this tool. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 There, there's <laughs> definitely a great awareness uh, in Microsoft. <laughs> I think the, um, I, and I know you and other people are probably all, all involved at this point in, in, in various ways in the, the desktop hardening um, that, that, uh, that's, uh, you know, aiming towards for you know the next yes, like 12 to 24 indeed. for months yeah yeah so i think that's really good the the, the further integration and ability to um i don't want to say illegally but uh, officially uh make certain changes to the models uh and everything else is, is going to be a i think a really big step forward for the next 24 12 to 24 months to continue to allow pro development tools to do some of those um uh like i said officially supported uh where you know if, because I, I know there, there's at least a few things today that I, I've I've hacked around in a model, but you know it's one of those you got to tell the client like we can do this. It's going to be a great feature, uh, but if it breaks, like Microsoft support's going to just like no, nope, sorry, we're like that's that is uh, something you you should not have done to your model. So there will be a lot more officially supported tweaks and and uh, upgrades you can you can do moving forward um, down the pipeline. Yeah, that's what we're all waiting for. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let me flip back to us over here. Uh, but this has been fantastic. I dropped both of your links in there, by the way, for Git, GitHub. Thanks. And for the recruitment. Um, otherwise, I think everything else for those tuning in are down in the description. But Matthias, this has mm -hmm. been great. Uh, I love the the uh, the export that comes with uh, a lot of this. The fact that it all uh, it spits it into a file means that you can easily also potentially digest that into another data source. Uh, one of my, I guess, remaining questions would be <laughs> um, just some of the, the very excited comments that I'll throw onto the screen here in a second um, is instead of just a, a flat file, uh, would it be possible to, to configure PBI tools just to, to throw that into like a, an Azure SQL table or something really easily as well? I, I think, or um, I mean, it's definitely possible. It doesn't doesn't sound like it would be uh, very hard to do. Um, so I'm open to ideas here. Yeah. Um, I'm personally not doing uh, very much with with that output right now, but I definitely see the potential there. And uh, yeah, because like my, my immediate uh, thing is, that, oh, if that if that's going in as a log, like into a, a file, <clears throat> I would imagine yeah. for, from a uh, uh, security or maintenance perspective, like having it in a database would be really nice. Just to have a database mm -hmm. log table. So then my yep. first thought is, oh, okay, so I could use Power Automate to check to see for file changes and then and push that into mm -hmm. the database. But then you could also skip the middleman and just Oh, what, the, mm -hmm. what about if I just exported it directly into like either Azure Blob Storage or anywhere else that's more in a uh, database type structure? But I, yeah. I just I like the auto logging because um, I think having that for mm -hmm. historical uh, purposes or tracking or any KPIs or anything else I think could be really useful. So this is uh, definitely a nice additional integration into PBI tools for sure. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, good common, idea. The, but I also have over 110. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Thanks. I have over 110 issues open right now, you know, oh, of okay. yeah, uh, improvements yeah. and tweaks mm -hmm. and additions. So that's yet another one, I'm afraid. Um, it's bugs, <laughs> then, then, and fixes and improvements, right? Kind of in that yeah. order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get that. Uh, I've, um, I think between having conversations with you, Didier, uh, Daniel, and Darren, I'm trying to trying to think of all the main external tool developers, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there's others that I I missed. There's always the uh, oh, like no, trust me, I'm I'm aware of that thing, but there's a list of things that I'm <laughs> also working on for this tool. Um, and this is something you're also doing as a as a uh, uh, a side project as well, to you know, to even yep. your main work. Uh, so it it you know it 
it's probably limited hours to work on a lot of things for sure. Indeed, indeed. Okay, I think I have one more question that we can actually maybe finish cool. up the, uh, with. Um, just as a reminder, always just make sure to, to start those with a Q just so I can catch them easier with my mm -hmm. eye. But let me throw this onto the screen. Uh, this individual is asking, can we do incremental refresh in Power BI report server, not the, the cloud version? I don't know. I, I really can't give you a good answer here. I have no experience, uh, fortunately, maybe. <laughs> With reports or uh, do, do you happen to know? I mean, I, I would think so, right? Because it's uh, um, basically the same the same code base. It's a great question. I, I I think I would throw and say I don't know. I, I know most service features aren't available in Report Server, like dashboards. There's there's a lot of extra things that aren't. Right. So yeah. my my thought, without digging into it, would be that the interface to do it in Power BI Desktop probably would not work publishing. To report server, mm. but if you were to use, if you were to turn it on and configure it with PBI tools or tableau editor or some other external tool, and it's like let's assume it's it's running on, you know, Azure Analysis Services or some other kind of like live connected yeah. environment, then then it then it might work uh, potentially. Again, I, mm. I don't know, but that that's just my initial train of thought is it, it probably is not enabled by default, but there's probably some way to potentially do it uh, using your tool or others, and it, it, depending on where the model is hosted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, incremental refresh is actually just a tabular engine feature, right? Exactly. Um, I mean, the the only uh, the, the only proper Power BI thing here is basically that dialog and Power BI desktop we saw earlier, which effectively yep. generates a bit of JSON to then send to to the tabular engine, right? Um, exactly. Everything else is is handled over there, and I I, I can only imagine that that would ship the exact same engine version um mm -hmm. to go with uh, report server right it's uh, usually but, like a quarter uh, yeah. behind or something like that mm -hmm. just because they get slower releases but otherwise yeah and and the flavor of incremental refresh we've seen today has been supported since um compat level 1550 um okay. which has been around for a very long time so this is yep. uh this is not a new feature at all it, it, yeah n not new uh certainly for the tire like it's five, six years ago, at least for the, the engine, and then two, mm -hmm. two, almost two years now for Power BI when it was enabled, because that was back in like, start of COVID, I think, 2020 or so. Mm. Yeah. But excellent. Yeah, I think this is uh, this has been really great. Uh, I appreciate you coming back on again. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is this is a fun talk that hopefully you can turn into like a pre-con to maybe release at SQL Bits. Um, I know I just applied a few sessions and I should be also submitting a pre-con with another MVP as well. So uh, good chance that I will be seeing you there and of course in just in a few weeks and pass. Uh, um, for anybody else who's curious, like pass, you know, big uh, kind of database and other conference that's hosted in Seattle, um, Redgate bought the rights to it and they're, they're doing the first one in session in, in person in like three years. So I'm really excited uh, for the event again. It's going to be a lot of fun and Matthias, myself and I, <clears throat> Too many to count other uh, I would yeah. say presenters and MVPs that I that I know are all going to be there. So it's it's kind of like a giant reunion uh, for for a lot of us to uh, to get to see people we haven't seen in three to four years. Um, okay, you know what? Like awesome. I would say normally I'd wrap up. I, I'm going to throw one more because it's D, it's DDR. Are there and, more questions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, one more question. This will be the final 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 question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have a clue on the mysterious major update coming uh, with the sixteen hundred <laughs> no, compatibility level? Um, okay. uh, well, actually, um, I think it may be related to um, uh, Secret Server 22. Um, if you look in into the official Microsoft docs around compat level, uh, they actually associate uh, the 22 Secret Server um, release with 1600 and the 19 mm. release 1500. So it must be related to that one. I, but uh, we, I we do know I that yeah. in terms of uh, tabular features, mm. um, there was actually nothing noteworthy uh, that, that would have justified a, a major bump. Uh, I remember you know that... the, the. I've heard that from some Microsoft people too, because I, I thought this, and I, I think it was exactly that. SQL was getting an update, but then they're like, why, why, why did we give it a sixteen hundred instead of like fifteen eighty yeah. years? Like it, it, it seems like it's a massive thing. Like yeah, you're right. I 
is yeah. from my perspective as well from conversations there's almost it's very marginal changes but it's it's just right. they're, they're they're marching both of them forward together yes and it, in fact it was the same with 1500 so uh, i uh, you probably know i'm maintaining some sort of unofficial documentation around compat mm -hmm. levels on my blog um uh, where I'm, I'm providing uh, details around uh, what's being added at each new level. And yep. if you go back and look at what happened between 14, I think 70 or so, oh, no, 1480 and 1500, um, it was minute. You know, it, 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 it was definitely nothing major at all. And it, it was more or less a product release change rather than a feature <laughs> release uh, at that point. Um, so yeah, it's the same here. Uh, uh, nothing, unfortunately, nothing to get um, overly excited about. <laughs> um, exactly. Cool. Um, well, thanks so much for um, having me on, on the live stream again. Uh, as you said, we did a few um, sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one recordings in the meantime, but uh, mm -hmm. the, the live stream is uh, a lot more fun. And uh, the last one <laughs> um, we did was yeah. back in January, so it's been a while. So yeah, really appreciate it. And also absolutely kudos uh, to Mike Carlo. You mentioned him right at the beginning. Uh, you know, we uh, did the a session on um, incremental refresh uh, at Power BI Next Step uh, a month ago. And uh, we, we spent a lot of time and energy um, working through this and, and, uh, and preparing for this. So uh, a lot of stuff that's gone into this uh, wouldn't have been uh, where it's at, you know, without actually Mike um, being there too. So yeah, thanks very much. Cheers uh, as well to Mike and Matthias. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night and I'm sure we'll have you back on again sometime in the near future. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks, Reed. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.